Welcome to Gu Dao Jingxing, Walking the Timeless Way, a podcast that digs deeply into the ancient texts of Tao Te Ching to uncover its timeless wisdom and discuss how to apply it to today's chaotic world. I'm Ian Felton, practicing psychotherapist, and I'm joined with my co-host, executive coach, David Wong. Good morning, David. Good morning, Ian. How you been? How you been? So long time no see. <laughs> we've had a even though we've kept up our our pace, we haven't seen each other for a little while. But this week we're moving on to chapter seventy nine, and so we're we're getting very close to finishing the book. And just for the listeners, maybe who are joining us for the first time, we're going to do a little focus on chapter 79 today. You're going to do a, a quick reading in Chinese, and then we'll do a, a translation. And then we're just going to have a discussion about the chapter and the, the themes in it. And this is what we've been been doing for a while and, and closing it on the end. So would you like to start us off with the reading today? Sure. He da yuan, bi you yu yuan, an ke yi wei shan, shi yi sheng ren, zhi zuo qi, ar bu zhe yu ren, gu you de si qi, 无德思彻,天道无亲,常与善人. Mm. And so I'm going to do a, a, a translation today. I'm going to read straight out of um, Lin Yutang. The, the Red Pine one um, is good, but I think the, the Lin Yutang one makes it a little little clear, it's a little more concrete. So Lin Yutang gives the, the chapter title, it says, Peace Settlements, patching up a great hatred is sure to leave some hatred behind. How can this be regarded as satisfactory? Therefore, the sage holds the left tally and does not put the guilt on the other party. The virtuous man is for patching up. The vicious is for fixing guilt. But the way of heaven is impartial. It sides only with the good man. Great. So what's your react, just general reaction to this, this chapter? I think it's a very timely message. It's, it's, it's hard. It feels hard in today's world. Hmm. But I think certainly uh, Lao Tzu provides a very different perspective in handling, you know, resentment, you know, hostility, you know, all kinds of conflicts. Mm -hmm. What do you think are kind of the at the root of the the conflicts in in our country today? Um, I think amplified self interest. Mm -hmm. I think it's the mm -hmm. uh, kind of a separateness. Sep uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the sense of uh, alienation or you know, I think it's the notion of we are all separate from each other. Mm -hmm. We are not part of the whole, mm -hmm. uh, in my view. What What do you think? Well, I think I, I I like going down this path a little bit more, and then maybe just talking about more about why there's the separateness, or or where is the separateness mm -hmm. coming from? I think that makes a lot of sense that the division and separateness is at the 
the the root of the the conflict i mean conflict by nef- definition is is separateness so mm-hmm. there's no common ground there's no harmony it's wherever that violence is mm-hmm. present and not just literal physical violence but the emotional violence of anger and and hatred and um just disparaging each yeah. other and so if we just explore well, why is there so much where why is there amplified separateness why is there amplified division i think for a long time there has been emphasis on on individual rights i think to some extent uh, i think we are all you know uh unique individual beings all connected but that push toward um you know more of a uh more of a very strong uh, strong self mm. has something to do with it mm-hmm. if you look at back in history i think this thing has been like a growing and growing and growing you know we're mm-hmm. at a stage mm-hmm. now i think that ego you know, it's becoming like a, almost like a virus that affects all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I want to keep, keep digging in, into that, that mm-hmm. the virus of, of the ego, I mean, the, the, tw- the 20th century, there's a, on YouTube, you can watch it called the century of the self. And it mm-hmm. talks about how along with Sigmund Freud and psychoanalysis, the um, emergence of of marketing that really they kind of just figured out like, wow, you can get people to buy stuff when you Mm -hmm. attach products and ideas to their identity and really just pretty much just prey upon people's sense of self. Right. and and obviously we've we're we're now in the stage of hyper marketing around this and and it's gotten deeper than than i mean it's it keeps getting refined and and now it's really Mm -hmm. been refined where you know tied up in people's politics tied Mm -hmm. up in people's web browsing history i mean they've refined it to such an extent now that obviously like you can direct market to Mm-hmm. Um, people in a very um, just laser focused way but when you were talking about going back into history and going back even further at how that selfishness has arisen we're going to get to it in pretty soon and in, in Tao Te Ching when Lao Tzu talks about his ideal society mm-hmm. But we can see that with the emergence of civilization, which started with agriculture, I mean, that's when people really specialization began where there was an excess of food and you could start creating a ruling class. I mean, it was after agriculture that the ruling class and political class arose where these people didn't work anymore. They essentially just managed others and held power over others because before that you couldn't afford that that when when people were more hunter gathering nomadic you weren't gathering up possessions you couldn't afford to because you had to carry them from place to place and you had to look after each other constantly because if someone was sick or if someone was too tired or whatever it was, it affected everyone directly. So Mm -hmm. everyone had to pay attention to each other a lot more and see the society as one unit rather than a bunch of little me's. Mm -hmm. So I think 
you know, we, we have to go back that far to at least see where this emergence of selfishness has arisen. Yeah. And uh, I imagine at that time, if we're talking about selfish, maybe there's a only a small number of people like uh, at the top of the society. Yeah. Uh, they are probably, their sense of self is much stronger than the masses. Mm -hmm. Right now, every, even within the masses, you know, there's a like a lot of little selves. So that's what I see the trend. Yeah. I see over throughout human history, that sense of self is cascading down and down and down mm -hmm. and now to every one of us. Yeah. A bunch of little, little emperors. Something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. In the, in the, in the, in the maybe ancient times, you know, there's only one emperor, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then throughout, now everybody feels they're entitled to be an yeah. emperor. Yeah. And, and, and that's across the whole political spectrum. You look at mm -hmm. um, on the left and the right, there's a lot of the sense of, you know, what I'm owed, what I, what I expect other people to do for, for me and not a whole lot about, well, giving back or engaging in, um, civic programs or anything like that, w whether it's the, the right and in individual rights and, you know, not treading on my freedom to be a total jerk or, or, or whatever. And then even on the left, a lot of messages of like money from the government, you know, w wanting stu student loans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cut, wanting, wanting money for this, wanting money for that. But there's no, you don't hear people talking about individual effort being put into society. You don't hear that side of the message. Yeah, yeah. Kind of rights versus obligations or and responsibilities, yeah. right? Yeah. Just yeah. like in this chapter, Lao Tzu is, um, there's a one sentence here. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel nowadays where, uh, you know, in the society, there's more and more people uh, holding the, uh, not uh, holding the mirror uh, and look at themselves, mm -hmm. but really holding the spotlight or flashlight toward others uh, well, and, to, to mm -hmm. you know, br blame others mm -hmm. and uh, as opposed to be more self-reflective and self, more self-disciplined, in, more inward. Mm -hmm. It's and, more like attacking outward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 looking outward and, and not looking in, inside at, at responsibilities or, or obligations. And when you said that, it made me think you, you had sent me um, a quote. Do you have that quote handy? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Could, would you mind sharing that? And then maybe we can talk about that. The, yeah. The, the... Yep. Uh Well, here's the quote. The single biggest thing I learned was from an indigenous elder of Cherokee descent, Stan Rushworth, who reminded me of the difference between a Western settler mindset of I have rights and an indigenous mindset of I have obligations. Instead of thinking that I'm born with rights, I choose to think that I'm born with obligations to serve past, present, and future generations and the planet herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that feels a lot just to, it, exactly when we're talking about these, these contracts in this chapter that it's this focus on 
when when Lao is talking about the negative, he's talking about you know being focused on my rights, like this legalistic. Yeah. You know, this framework says I'm owed this, I'm owed this, I'm owed this, I'm owed this. Yeah. And Lao Tzu, of course, is saying like that's not the way of heaven. The the way of heaven is it's different than that, and it feels like what you just read has the same spirit of what Lao Tzu was saying, which is that instead of being focused on what you're owed, maybe focus on what your responsibilities are to other people, future generations, the planet itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a different perspective. It's more from a perspective of the heaven's way. What, what's the impact that you think that, that that shift in perspective, what's the impact that it, it would have on someone and maybe how they go through their day? Uh, the impact of... Uh, if you switch to the mindset of, I have obligations. Well, first of all, for the person who have that mindset, uh, it's probably more feeling more empowered because you are not constantly expecting and looking for other people, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to, uh, to fulfill their obligations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. always frustrating because you give that power to other people. Wow. That's really really in, insightful i think this this notion of oh ev everybody else has ab obligations but me everybody has obligations to me but i don't really have any i just have rights freedoms and entitlements right i think that mindset is more of a victim mindset so mm -hmm. let's imagine i mean sometimes we ourselves uh, in different occasions we might have that mindset too you know consciously mm -hmm. or unconsciously that's not a great feeling. That's not an empowered feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, look, look at how many people do have that victim mentality. Now the, the, there's a lot of weak spirited people that don't feel empowered that are, are constantly sh claiming some type of victimhood and how society needs to, you know, r repair that for them. Yeah. 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 So that's impact number one. I think number two is uh, a positive influence uh, because the way you think people, other people will pick up the difference. You don't say anything. You are not teaching. You are not preaching, right? Mm -hmm. You're not like appearing self-righteous mm -hmm. or like, a, what's the word? The, through virtual signaling. Virtue signaling, yeah. Yeah, but if people see uh, that, you know, through very positive example, mm -hmm. and some of them might follow. So it's like a contagious. I think mm -hmm. both ways can can, uh, can uh, be contagious. If we are blaming others, what we are getting is will be blamed. If mm -hmm. we judge others, will be judged. Mm -hmm. Just like what what is being said in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. But if we just focusing on ourselves and fulfill our duty. And other people see it, and uh, they might do so the same. It's like compounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of society breaking down, society starts lifting itself up again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and also, the a related point uh, uh, is, uh, I think leaders have uh, disproportionately like more impact so in other words uh you know during the time you know i remember the famous saying by you know president kennedy you know don't want don't ask what the country do for you and you know ask yourself what you can do to, for the country i think mm -hmm. during certain historical periods there's this blossoming of a more of a public spirit in, in other words, those things, just like the spirit of what's, what Lao Tzu is saying here, mm -hmm. you know, all the way from the leaders and uh, uh, 
up from the leaders and leaders set very positive examples and role models. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I think people are a lot of people are feeling very cynical because uh, there are a lot of leaders are very self-serving. You know, they talk one thing, but they do the other. And they're very hypocritical too. So people see through them and people say, oh, if they are doing this, uh, you know, within, you know, already having, you know, a lot, what's the problem with my, you know, watching my own interest? Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of influence uh, is also going on in the society, in corporations, uh, in government. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, le it leads people to have a mindset of just, you know, everyone's just out for themselves. Everyone's just mm -hmm. trying to get what's theirs. And, and if you just accept that and do the same thing for yourself, then, you know, then you've got life figured out. And it's just such a, that's just such a, um, well, it, it's overly simplistic, but it, it, mm -hmm. it also is just such a degraded way of going through life. It's very true. It's very true. Um, the irony is the more, you know, we are serving ourselves, the more actually uh, emptiness and the meaningless, you know, we may e experience. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of ironic. You, you mm -hmm. would have thought, oh, the more you enrich yourself, right? You, the more the plant you get for yourself, then the more of a abundance you feel. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's just the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, a wealthy person, but it's a, like a, in the old, old stories, the, what they call the miser. You know, mm -hmm. everybody, you know, uh, no one really like is connected with that person, but the mm -hmm. person is hoarding, you know, so much there, just, you know, suffering from loneliness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, the miser that is, is, is disconnected from every single person and is only focused on what's his. Yeah. 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 And, and feeling miserable. That's the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, so a complete lack of spirituality, a can, and and spirituality obviously being derived through relationships with the world. You you can't have spirituality as an individual. You can only have spirituality through engagement with the world. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're all we ever are is our relationships to the world. That we don't exist. That when we think that we exist as individuals, that's an illusion. We're, we're embedded within the world. We're, we're, we're part of the world. The world is flowing through us. And so to exist as an individual, you, you have to put up these psychological barriers in a way that cuts you off from real yeah. spiritual growth or opportunity. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, like in the Bible, uh, you know, this symbol of cross, you know, some people will say, oh, I have a very close relationship with God, like that vertical, mm -hmm. but that vertical and the horizontal, they work together. Mm. You know, I, I remember this, a, a, a message in there that basically that's it saying, if you say you love me, you love God, but you don't love your, your brothers and sisters then, you know, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, uh, make any sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what does that tell us? That tells us that, you know, without that, um, horizontal connections and fellowship or, uh, interconnection with other human beings. Yeah. And, and, and so how, how, how are we going to do some of this? How are we going to, as far as loving our brothers and sisters in, in a modern way, we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, deal, dealing with today's 
chaotic world mm -hmm. and this notion of being in this chapter Lao Tzu talks about the 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 way of heaven being impartial um but then also the importance of being a good person when it comes to mm -hmm. these these contracts i mean w how are we going to do that in the in this country today mm -hmm. what are some some practical ways of of doing that mm -hmm. first of all uh you know as you just uh, read the last sentence of this chapter uh about the good person uh in the original text it's a uh, shan ren shan ren mm -hmm. shan is a very interesting mm -hmm. chinese word uh because uh if you look at the original uh way of how that character is written it has a lot to do with the lamb like a uh, yang yang mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or sheep right yeah yeah uh because just like uh, in the Western uh, tradition, like you know, specifically Christianity, this yang in China in the ancient time symbolizes uh, goodness and even beauty mm. for some reason. So you know, I read some history about how that letter uh, is. Uh, kind of were written and uh, mm -hmm. also interpreted. Uh, a you know the 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 characteristics or the nature of the lamb uh, is has a lot to do with why people see that as goodness or mm -hmm. even a good fortune mm -hmm. uh, because of its softness like a shui, like water mm. in China, in China. So people, you know, in China, they see yang. So you, when you see the shan, there's a yang on top of it. Mm -hmm. And and again, just to clarify, you're talking about in the, in Chinese writing, the, the characters are also symbolic. And a lot of times they're constructed with different symbols, kind of all put together in a conglomerate to make a bigger meaning. Yes. So in, in this word, the the symbol for lamb is put on top of this other symbol to make a bigger meaning. Exactly. Uh, so, so what does that mean? That means when Lao Tzu say shan ren, it's not just like purely saying, uh, uh, you know, a morally righteous person. Mm -hmm. Basically, he's describing a certain person who acts in accordance with Tao. Mm -hmm. uh, in another chapter, he even used another uh, another phrase called "shang shan ruo shui." The mm. ultimate yeah. shan goodness is mm -hmm. like water. Yeah, ruo shui is like water. Like water. So, what does that mean? Uh, why? You know, even though heaven is impartial, but the the person, the shan ren, end up being in a more favorable position. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's through the exercise of the heaven, right? Yeah. It's more like the heaven's soft water nature mm -hmm. is uh, is built into everyone, mm -hmm. and the shan ren you know, they get manifested more. Mm -hmm. And that leads to more of, uh, because that person is more acting, uh, you know, in the spirit of Tao. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Because here again, it's that it's a subtle shift, but it, it's a critical one, which, which mm -hmm. isn't, oh, because I'm such and such, the divine powers are going to bless me because it loves me and because of how special and great I am. Right. It's, it's no, the, the essence of Tao is impartial. It's your, going back to obligation. It's your obligation to align yourself with Tao and then you'll get the benefits of it. Right. 
And he also said uh, 常语, he doesn't say always, he says so no. often. So there, no. there are circumstances you are doing this for the time being because the way yin and yang works, sometimes mm -hmm. you end up in a bad situation. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think it's there's a saying in in the um uh in in the Western world, which is the the arc of the universe mm -hmm. is always bending toward justice. Mm -hmm. Right? So what that, that saying tells me is uh over a period of time, a longer period of time, maybe there are ups and downs, there are fluctuations, there are sometimes some days when the sun is covered by the clouds. Mm -hmm. But over a period of time, you see the working of Tao. That very nature is goodness, is a sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the arc being the, the critical piece of that, which is that mm -hmm. at any point, you could be at a different part of that arc. It's, yes. And, and, but you can't be confused by that point. You still have to look at the arc as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. So, so getting back to your original question, what, how do you actually do it? You know, what is the, mm -hmm. you know, the, as we how always say, that how do you walk the timeless? Yes. All right. Um, to answer that question, my first thought is you have to you have to recognize that how nature works. Because I feel like a lot of times, because of the declining or even lack of a belief in these kind of things, we rely much on ourselves to fight the wars and kind of to defend ourselves. I think in, in the modern psyche, you know, that's a very typical psyche. If no one is, mm -hmm. you know, watching for my own interest, who else will be that kind of a mindset? Like, mm -hmm. let, let's say if somebody is attacking me or even doing a justice, right? My typical social response is I have to fight back. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I will be looked at uh, as a weak, and then more and more predators or more and more aggressions will be mm -hmm. against me. Mm -hmm. I think that sets the whole dynamics in motion, then tit for tat. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, 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 kind of a getting back to a basic understanding of how heavenly ways works, I think that realization is a very important first step, even though at the very spiritual and mental level. Because hmm. otherwise we always by default will, you know, it's through that natural self-defense. Yeah. And, and so there's a couple of um, sayings from Tao Te Ching that come to mind as mm -hmm. far as ways that maybe we can keep keep some of this in, in mind daily um the one which is is that to those who are good i am also good yes to, yes. to those who are bad i am also good so that they may learn goodness yes yes and 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 this feels like kind of central to this that you know, I'm going to treat everybody the same, whether you're good, bad, whatever. And, and in some ways, it's even more important to treat the bad with goodness because they're the ones that obviously don't know how to be good. If pe people who know how to be good, it, it's easier to be good to them because they already understand how to do that. If If you return the energy of, you know, bad people with just more badness that's only reinforcing this worldview that they already have which is like yep look see it's just violence it's just survival of the fittest and you know here's just one more piece of evidence that how i'm going about doing things is correct so that's kind of the critical thing you know if 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 someone is impolite or rude to us and we just immediately start matching that energy 
well, we're just proving to them that, yeah, everyone's just a bunch of jerks and rude and without any sort of um, humility or, or compassion. And so that's that's holding the side of the contract where you're owed something, right? Like, oh, this this person didn't treat me the way that I feel entitled to be treated. So now I'm just going to start punishing them. Yeah, yeah. What what you're saying is very interesting because that reminds me of almost similar messages or underlying messages across traditions. Let, let, let me give you a, a few examples I can that uh, jump into my mind. Number one, let's say, you know, the Westerns, Western uh, tradition, even before Christianity, like take, you yeah. know, the uh, Socrates, for example, mm -hmm. I think he had a notion of that, you know, for the sake of your soul, because the ancient Greek, they, they believe your, your soul. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically he's saying that you would rather suffer the injury from others as opposed to injury others in order to, for the sake of your soul, mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah. that that's, it, that's amazing. It's almost like, as you said, like, uh, when, when you're, uh, don't do anything to incur a injury of other people, right? Mm -hmm. You would rather like suffer. Like it's mm -hmm. almost like, you know, you are the one that is being hurt. Yeah. And, a, and, and it doesn't mean that we have to go, be, go masochistically through life where we have to prove it by going out and, and trying to take on all these burdens and, and hurts. It's not that kind of no, no, masochism. No, because no, that, that's against Tao too, because Tao even says, don't be contrived. Right, right, right. Uh, exactly. That's a good uh, clarification. It's it's not like you're just <laughs> in, in order to prove how great you are. You're just like going around and like being injured by everyone. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this, this is a this is a yeah. This is a very ridiculous scenario. But what it is is when somebody attacked you, you are not following that you know natural instinct. Uh, to necessary to to attack you mm -hmm. you have a choice of course that choice i think you it's ba it's based on the circumstances mm -hmm. you have to use your judgment right uh in terms of sometimes when it is really like around your survival and you have to do the dispense i think that there's in proportion you have to respond to it mm -hmm. But yeah. you absolutely can you 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 can have a choice not to over attack or mm -hmm. right just just like say oh um, I see a lot of people like their sometimes their response is way over the original if you mm -hmm. like observe like let's say in the corporate world uh, I think uh, I see a lot of overreacting to emails right to mm. somebody saying maybe somebody's like in a meeting but mm -hmm. you, you see the differences in terms of how people manage it uh i mm. even think of another example from the ancient time that's after uh, socrates which is uh uh which is like uh, aristotle uh in one of his virtues he said magnanimity mm, mm -hmm. the 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 greatness or the big big somebody with a big heart i feel uh, few and few people have those attributes in our society like a big heart exactly and yeah. Yeah. and and let's make the connection again back to to Lao Tzu. it's exactly what he was saying when an an ocean lets all rivers flow into it that's exactly what he was saying, having yeah. that big heart. Yeah. So as you can see, you know, of course, then in the 
in, in Christianity, that's even more about, you know, turning to your right cheeks, go the mm -hmm. extra mile, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, 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 you know, those things, uh, in, you know, in Christian uh, 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 terms, like you have to have the, the grace. Mm -hmm. Basically, somebody is deserving, right, to be punished, but, you know, you have to have certain grace, mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. and also, also like, like the Father in heaven, like say, you know, as you said earlier, heaven doesn't choose, like say, oh, I will, I will, sh the sunshine will just only fall, fall upon the good people, right. and it, that those people are the bad people, so right. there's no, no sunshine for them. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. So it seems like across all these traditions, we're hearing about the same thing. Yeah. And, and I think that that word grace, I'm so glad that, that you used it because even in psychotherapy in my practice, one of the core interventions that I use, I mean, I've kind of studied mm -hmm. broadly across the realm of psychotherapy orientations and how funny is it that I keep coming back to what seems like really resonates with people are these messages of ancient wisdom, the stuff that people figured out thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. but now, you know, cause we can wrap it up in case studies or, um, you know, re, re, research it and put it in an academic paper. Somehow mm -hmm. now it has mm -hmm. more v validity, but it's the same stuff. And so what I try to, um, intervene when I see that people are really, you know, wounded, that basically it's a, it's a, it's a, an issue of not having this big heart, right? Like their hearts are wounded. And I call them the three sacred gifts because they are sacred and, and, and it's acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And this acceptance piece, which is that we're human, like we are not robots. We are so fallible and it's so easy for us to make mistakes, to be only seeing things from our narrow little perspective, to not have the big picture, mm -hmm. to, not, to not be being empathetic, to be just wrong. So acceptance of that, like, you know, getting over ourselves, accepting that not only are we very fallible, but so is everyone else. And that we didn't choose to be in this situation, accepting that, that this situation is out of our control. Like this, this whole human condition, mm -hmm. we don't have any control over. See, that part, I think is even hard for many people, because I see a lot of people are treating themselves very harshly. Yes. Refusing to accept mm -hmm. that we are follow, we are flawed being, we're not perfect. Yes. I think that kind of either it's an illusion or it's a way of believing. I find it very troublesome. Sometimes mm -hmm. unconsciously, I've, I, I catch myself doing that. Yeah, it's easy uh, to do. And just like say, oh, you know, whenever I find myself in a perfectionist tendency mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not really discern discerning, like through my doing things, mm -hmm. uh, whether it will make a difference. I, uh, you know, I, I think recently I was got into a situation that in hindsight, I said, oh, what if I had, you know, at that time I have a more clear thinking, I could very easily say, uh, no, I, I couldn't, I, you know, I don't, I don't do this because, uh, but 
I did, and I get evolved, and it more evolved, and evolved, mm -hmm. like falling in a, into a swamp. So mm -hmm. suddenly I remember, you know, like why Wu Wei? Wu Wei is like not doing anything, like doing yeah. nothing. Wu yeah. Wei is choosing to do the work that makes, you know, it's to to do the necessary work, but yeah. not act upon your illusion. Yep. I find I like it very that. hard. Like I say, oh, but in hindsight, I just realize it that what if I said I said no, but why didn't at that time I say no? Because you know, then I analyze mm -hmm. it with a, another friend. The friend said, well, mm -hmm. one of the things is what you got involved that area is actually your natural strengths. Mm -hmm. Because you're strong in that, then mm -hmm. you feel like you can add more add value. But mm -hmm. obviously, in that situation, you are overusing your strengths. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is, you know, I was trying to be helpful, you know, mm -hmm. but my sense of the being helpful in a narrow way through my own involvement, it, you know, like didn't produce the outcome that I intended. Mm. So those are the two reflection points. Like, when I reflected why, in hindsight, I got more involved in a certain situation, one is that situation seems like require my strengths. So I have an ability to use my strengths, right? But I, mm -hmm. but, but I, I may have overused it. And secondly, just the intention of being helpful, but not in a more open-minded way, what is helpful? What exactly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which kind of then le leads into the second part, which is the com compassion, not just for other people, but for ourselves when, when maybe we don't have the ability to help. Again, going back to accepting that powerlessness, mm. kindness when, well, I actually don't have the, my, my strengths aren't even a benefit here. Mm. Can I still be kind to myself that in that situation when I find that, you know, I just, there's very little I can do in this situation? Well, in hindsight, it's easier to see, but sometimes in the moment, we've been always taught to give it a try. You mm -hmm. know, don't stop. Mm -hmm. But I think that teaching in itself also re requires some reflection. So in mm -hmm. other words, you know, when can you make a judgment that you should keep trying? When do you just surrender and say, actually, this situation is beyond, you know, my notion of being helpful? That's a very difficult question, and obviously the the context matters. And you know, I think the doing the reflection is obviously the important piece to actually think about it. But then finally, if if our actions aren't very skillful, that's the the final piece, which is about forgiving ourselves, forgiving ourselves if, hey, maybe I did push that too far or forgiving the other person, you know, they push things too far. That's that forgiveness piece. And then tying this all back to the word grace that you said, it's when we're applying those three sacred gifts that we do arrive at that place of grace where now rather than holding these contracts in our hands and constantly going around waving our demands in everybody else's face, we have that grace that you're talking about. This acceptance of this messy world that we're not in control of, e even ourselves, even our own minds that we're not in control of, compassion for ourselves and other people that we're all stuck in this situation, and then forgiveness to, for ourselves and others when our actions lead to unnecessary suffering that we didn't in, intend. Or maybe we did in, intend, but we were mad or upset or disappointed. And so we acted out of that. 
that's what leads to this grace that we're talking about. And I think that's what Lao Tzu is talking about, about this, the, the Shanren, someone who embodies this kind of grace. Yeah, yeah. When you think about it, one thing we can say for sure, you know, in different traditions, maybe, you know, whether it's a personal God or maybe it's a natural uh, order, it seems like what you're saying, that grace is manifested, you know, uh, in, in uh, either personal God or the divine uh, or the natural order. So in other words, like when you think about it, acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness. I mean, you see that, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you see that, that, uh, that acceptance, heaven's way is accepting the fact of, you know, change and, uh, you know, one wu, 10,000 things. Yeah. It has that big heart to mm -hmm. embrace all kinds of things. Big or small, tall or short, right? Mm -hmm. Poor or rich. Yeah. And and we kind of going back to this country, it's like that's the foundations of democracy, right? The ten thousand things. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, there's there's ten thousand ways of looking at things. What why why do you feel like your very narrow way of looking at it is so much bigger than Mm -hmm. The 9,999 other ways of looking at it. Why do you think that you're so special and that your way of looking at things is so darn special that everyone else should just cater to that worldview without question? And if they don't, that they're just some stupid person not worthy of respect or dignity. Yeah, yeah. I think democracy at, at its best that's what you're describing is exactly the reason why it resonate, resonates with many people around the world mm -hmm. when democracy has that spirit mm -hmm. uh, in it. Now, what we're facing now is, is the opposite of that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Either or left or right, yeah. instead of like having this notion of, you know, more of a, like an ocean. Mm -hmm. Right, a big heart. Now we're attacking the other side. Mm -hmm. It's author yeah, authoritarian on both sides. Yeah. And so that point on the arc is not necessarily one of those points where it feels like the way of Tao is, is mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we know that it is working. It is. It's been working from the very beginning. And uh, yeah. And, and so this, this call for us in this chapter, embody that grace. You know, how can we tread lightly in this darker time mm -hmm. so that we still have grace and don't just fall into the void with um, those who are lacking grace? Yeah, yeah. Sh show them, you know. Show them, experience it, right? The... Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, start from small things. I think it's always mm -hmm. starting from the people around us. I think when people around us make us uncomfortable or irritate us, create that space in our, in our mind and in our heart mm. is the first step. Mm -hmm. And and watch what happens. A lot of times, you know, it uh, it creates very interesting surprises. Like the people that you assume who have the ill intent, or even if they had the ill intent, it's interesting that sometimes it's like a 
waves in the ocean, like they recede mm -hmm. because you create a, a space between you and that person, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, attacked and fighting back, you know, heads on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I know it looks like we're running out of time for today, but definitely want to encourage everyone to, to take that in what you said, cre creating more space, creating more space, space and grace, right? Space and grace. I love it. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's something that uh, we can reflect on and meditate and practice every day. Well, thanks, David, for your insights, and thanks to the listeners for joining us today. You can connect with us on walkingthetimelessway.com. You can be a part of our Taoist organization, interact with us there, and and expand the conversation with, with more space with, with your point of view as well. So until next time.